we're challenging what they're doing and we're as nicely as possible asking them to get out of business. It's very hard to do that nicely though. So we're asking them and encouraging them face to face and through other means through the media and elsewhere to look into other businesses, to look into growing broccoli. So they've attacked the meat industry on the food safety side, on the health side, on the environmental side, and on the humane side, humane health side. And they, are, they know that today's consumers are nervous and anxious. Now it's quite popular among speakers like myself to scare beef producers by telling them that in fact uh, they're going to be replaced by the soya bean producer. Well, there's something in this, really, because after all, there are products on the market now made from soya beans which taste and, and uh, have the texture of beef and pork and ham and so forth. But let's not worry too much about it. Undoubtedly, there will be products like this on the market, uh, but they're not going to change the industry too much. In any case, the packing industry is trying all sorts of new st stunts. Freezing, freeze-drying, and A couple so times I've been, <laughs> I've been on the wrong side of a, of a fist. Never taken any punches, but I've been close a time or two. Um, yeah, these, you know, we are animal rights people, we're vegetarians, and when we go to stockyards, to factory farms, to slaughterhouses, what we stand for is in diametric op diametrically opposed to what those businesses stand for. So when we come into these facilities, the people get very upset. One reason is that when we go in there, we get videotape and pictures showing how horrible the conditions are. And when the public sees those, they don't Hi. want to support those industries. Um, you're not supposed to be taking pictures. Why aren't we allowed to take pictures? It's just company policy. Why? I don't know. <laughs> so we're not even on top of company. I know that. We're out. All I'm doing is taking pictures. I know that. Outside. But we're not allowed. Uh, I'm going to have to ask you guys to stop. Uh, can you give me more information? It's because of animal rights activists. That's why. So what do animal rights activists, what, what are they doing? Causing problems? Mm -hmm. What kind of problem? Uh, we've had bomb threats. Um, various things. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll believe. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. I do approve of the, the use of animals, but I think that we as in human society have to think very long and carefully about how we use animals for all sorts of things, for testing and for biomedical research and particularly in agriculture. But if overall we can show that these animals have a, a good life, uh, a life in which they do not suffer, and if they have painless death, then th that satisfies me. And I, I think in general it satisfies a large part of society. But what about the lives that the animals live? Are they actually living happy lives? No, I think that, that many farm animals do not live particularly happy lives. I think that some farm animals at certain times of their life, suffer. The normal way of looking after pregnant sows is to keep them in a stall. Sows naturally are very curious, they do a lot of exploration, and their normal lifestyle is exploring their environment, rooting and mouthing things and searching for food. And they're completely denied this when they're kept in sow stalls. The idea of keeping expectant sows in harness is originally German and makes them much easier to handle. Special stalls prevent the sow from accidentally crushing the nursing piglets. many, many pigs lined up, standing on concrete floors in fairly small, confined spaces. 
spaces where they were just really able to stand and lie down. Would that be acceptable practice and considered humane by the SPCA? It would depend on how well they are addressing the welfare needs of the animals. Being in a stall in itself need not be either humane or inhumane. It depends a great deal on how those systems are managed and whether or not they allow this pig to express what I call its pigness. I have, you know, seeing that pig farm the other day with the pigs in the small spaces and indoors and they were standing on concrete rows and rows. Were they squealing? Our work essentially focuses around whether or not an animal is in distress. If it is not in distress, then we have to trust that these management systems are appropriate. Most people assume that humane societies will take care of problems if there's a problem. So they assume that laws will protect animals from horrendous cruelty if it exists. But the fact is, laws have been weakened to allow the cruelty to exist. There are regulations that the Food Administration can trot out and show you and say, yeah, there's humane treatment. They have enough water, they have enough light, they have enough food. We even kill them in a way which isn't creating an undue suffering. And that's the standard of, of being humane. And, uh, and everyone goes home feeling fine, you know, well, I, then I don't have a problem with that. The animal rights activists are just lunatics. They just want a cause, that's all. One of the questions that I have is, what does humane mean? We know that they have other real emotions, they have other real feelings and needs which may be described as psychological as much as physical. And uh, we want to see their psychological needs met. But that we have to handle in a different way. Psychological well-being is something that no one has attempted to put a firm definition on. I don't think that anybody has the right to come up and say, well, these chickens are happy or they're unhappy, because until they can actually define to me what those stages mean, it would be very difficult to, to put a sort of a real finger on it and say, yes, this is good and this is bad, this bird is unhappy or happy. Or... It's more a level of well-being. Let me give you an example of a farmer. He raises egg layers. He calls the chickens his girls. He likes to hear them sing, he says. And I've heard this numerous times. They know that they're happy because they can actually hear them singing, they describe it as. When we see the geese flying overhead, heading north to wherever they're in the summertime going to nest and then going back south, um, and we see the spirit of that geese in its place the way it was intended, the beauty of that, the absolute rightness of that, must be what we first concern ourselves with. The intent of the creation to put the geese in that context is what is right. So if we manipulate that right and we can find the geese, what are we doing with that? What are we saying with that? are in a disturbed social situation as poultry and, and hogs are in the, in the factory.